الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله الحمد لله رب العالمين <تصفيق> الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجباروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون و you believe fear Allah as you should be feared and die not except in a state of Islam فمي الله سبحانه وتعالى the most merciful be so upon us the gift to die on a state of Islam اللهم أمين يا رب العالمين أما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in Surah Al-Shu'ara reporting what Ibrahim alayhi salam was saying when presenting his Lord to his people in a way of muhajjah they want to dispute to about his Lord the one they worship and give them the evidence of his greatness give them the evidence like reasonable evidence intellectual evidence that the only worthy of worship and the only one who has the power of everything and over all things and the kingdom of everything is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He told them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created him and the one who guide him. And the one who give him and he said, وَلَذِي هُوَ يُطْعِمُنِي يُطْعِمُنِي هُوَ يُطْعِمُنِي And he said, it's him. Because they claimed this false God that they had, they had the ability to provide. 
And he didn't say when it comes to yumituni, qala walladhi yumituni, he didn't say huwa yumituni because they know that the false god does not have any power of resurrecting or giving death. Then he said amazingly something that is very powerful along the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he presented to his people as an evidence to have them open their mind and maybe to guide their heart to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala walladhi atma'u an yaghfira li khati'ati yawm ad-din and the one that i have tama to forgive my sins my shortcoming my flaws in the day of judgment <clears throat> Amazingly, this is defining a relation between the servant and his Lord, between the servant and the Creator. Because those who are claiming false gods, they are taking advantage of this claim for their own benefit. So the relation between them and God is to serve their own interests. You find people, they're thinking that to worship this God to be provided. And if they have issue with the provision, they might change to another God who they might believe or they claim that they have such a thing. And you find, for example, people ruling, like Fir'aun, he claimed to be a god because the god that they believe in from the idols, they gave him, as they claim, the authority to be a god on earth. And in Surah Al-Araf, they told him, are they Musa going to let you alone and turn away from you and your gods that you worship? And that's it, the Dalala, the evidence that the God that he worshiped, he gave him this authority. It's a claim, it's false. Therefore, there is no relation between the servant of God and God except to serve their interests, to use it as a reference, to use it as a power to terrorize people. But here, subhanAllah, Ibrahim defined the relation that the true servant have with the true God. The word tama is very difficult to uh, translate it in English because if you put tama'a, you find like the greed, you find covetousness, things like that. But the tama, as you can see it and read it into the translation, you find desire, you find, uh, you know, longing, uh, hoping. But the tama is greater than all of that. It's really craving, hoping, longing with such peak of ferviousness to be able to be forgiven in the Day of Judgment. So here, Ibrahim salam defining a relation of a servant who is in need of his Lord, of a servant who showed humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of a servant testifying and witnessing with what he said, that this Lord has the kingdom of everything, that this God subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's in his hand to benefit and he's in his hand to harm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He punish whom He will And He forgive and have mercy on whom He will And to whom all you, you return And this subhanAllah when He said أطمعوا, أطمعوا, I'm, I'm craving, I'm desiring All my dream, all my dream is to, to have Allah forgive me And then we see subhanAllah in this way how Ibrahim was presenting and defining and talking about the attribute of his God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most, the key part is the relation of humility from Ibrahim to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this tama define his truthfulness, define his sincerity, define his humility, define the fact that the only dream that Ibrahim alayhi salam, the greatest, the ultimate dream, the greatest achievement is to be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the key of the manage of the relation is in this tama, in this tama, this craviness, this desire, this hoping, this longing to be forgiven. And we ask ourselves, today is Laylatul Qadr, do you have this craving? Do you have this longing? Because if someone will be making a dua, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. Forgive me is not about the sins that you have done. It's not about the sins that you have done. It's not like I ask forgiveness because I made the mistake. No, as we're going to explain it, the forgiveness is something else. 
And when you find Ibrahim alayhi salam, he is the friend of Allah, Khalilur Rahman. What type of sins that he had made or khati'ah that he wishing and longing and aspiring for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him the day of judgment. And in another dalala evidence that they show that the instruction in the ayah that there's an, a life that is going to come after this life and that is the true life. وَإِنَّ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ The hereafter is the true life. Allah created you for the hereafter to live forever, not to live in this life, in the short life, when people, subhanAllah, they're aspiring to have, you know, things in the dunya. Now, if you see people, how they desire this worldly life, how they desire this worldly life, how people, they want to be, for example, the ultimate objective is to be rich. Look, subhanAllah, the drive that they have, the craving that they have. They go to sleep with it. They dream about it. They wake up with it. All of them, subhanAllah, it becomes like the center of the life, the drive of the life, the guide of the life. Without it, subhanAllah, and for them, for some, is worthy of dying. Worthy of dying. Why? Because this is all what they aspire for. If you put that for the forgiveness, that's what we need to have, actually. You aspire for it to the point that you won't die for it. Why? Because the only way for you to be embraced in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the path of the forgiveness. And there's people, because they do not have this truthfulness in their heart. When I say truthfulness, they might think that they have it. But if there is no this tama, this key element in your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have this tama, this craving, desiring, I don't know if it's right to say craving, but just to give you the closest meaning for the Arabic word tama. Tama, it's like subhanAllah, someone aspiring, longing for it. It's the highest dream that the person has in his heart. Do you have it? And there's people, when they do istighfar, when they ask Allah for forgiveness, their way of asking of forgiveness actually require forgiveness. As Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu is passing by someone who was neglectful, not paying attention, does not have, subhanAllah, regarding the adab with Allah, that etiquette, that respect when he is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. He said, this person, he need to ask Allah for forgiveness the way he is making his forgiveness. And we don't want to be that. And in this key night, and inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be Laylatul Qadr, and to be a thousand months, a thousand months granted to you as a ibadah, if you do not have a heart ready, then are we going to miss it? To miss this great opportunity? But regardless, the tama is a requirement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He told us in Surah Al-A'raf, قَالَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ تَضَرُّعًا وَخُفْيَةً Call upon your Lord, تَضَرُّعًا in humility, begging, وَخُفْيَةً hidden, you know, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا Do not transgress. Pour it, let it have to be in the right manners, in the way of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ أَصْلَاحِهَا And do not corrupt into the earth after he set in order. And then he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَالَ وَدْعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا And call him with fear and tama. So it is a requirement from Allah to have this key element into your dua of forgiveness of al-tama. Al-tama is that drive. Al-tama is that dream. Al-tama, like when you go to sleep, I dream that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. That is the tama. That is the key element for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept you. Is the tama. قَالَ وَدْعُوهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of you that he, they read, you know, Surah Al-Sajjah in, in, uh, on Friday. And most of the, you know, we read it uh, into the, I mean, from the, among the Sunnah. Uh, to read it on Friday in, in Fajr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قَالَ تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِئِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا They say they're forsaking their beds. Why? Because they are... Thinking of Allah, thinking of His closeness, thinks of His near to be near to Him. Then they wake up, they get up from their bed, and they will be making sujood and qiyam, asking Allah khawfan wa tama'a, by fear and this tama'a, this longing, this drive, Ya Allah, forgive us, Ya Allah. So, are we really holding with high esteem the forgiveness, or the forgiveness just erasing some sin that they have done? What if you didn't have any sin, do you think, or you think that you didn't have any sin? You think that you don't need to ask forgiveness? Well, the Prophet ﷺ used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness in one gathering more than a hundred times, from 70 to 100 times. Therefore, 
one of these this element, this key element, if we want to have our Iman to be healthy, if we want to boost ourselves or our Iman to have more, uh, let's say, righteousness in our path, we have to introduce this Tama, this Tama, this craving. I mean, when you close your eyes and you see, you know, you have a lot of option in your mind. What is my greatest of the option here as a dream? You say, forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how you become a person who knows Allah. That's how you become a person who knows his own self and her own self. So, if to try to build this tama into the heart, this craving, this desire, this hoping, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the same surah about the magician of the Fir'aun. When they had believed, believed, they said, قَالَ وَالَّذِي قَالَ إِنَّا نَطْمَعُ We are wishing, we are desiring, we are hoping, we are craving that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, in the order or the meaning that we want to introduce here, قَالَ Desiring, hoping, longing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. And كُنَّا أَوَّلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ As we were the first to believe. So here, they are saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making this dream because what is the base of this dream that they become the first believer? So it is me like when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say, oh, fine, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, though, oh, forgiven, he will forgive me. This magician, they have presented something in front of Allah because they know how great is the forgiveness because no one they have the right on forgiveness. What it means, I'm going to explain it. So how to build, how to develop, how to create this longing of forgiveness to become the first of your dreams. And if we do not have it, then we lack in truthfulness, we lack in sincerity, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained us. And he told them, he told us as his prophet, they do the same thing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about Zakaria and Yahya, alayhim salam, and his wife, qala kanu yad'oonana raghaban wa rahaba. Raghaba is the stomach, longing, wa rahaba by fear. Therefore, the element of tama is one element that is necessary to the dua, necessary to the path, necessary to the istiqam. The first aspect is to know who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who forgives the sins, ghafiru them. Ghafiru them be subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he will take the whole people on earth and dump them in hellfire, he will have done it with justice. With justice. Put this in your mind. The fifth thing, you're not going to be spared, not because you are a believer. We're going to explain it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, He will take every. That's not Aziz. That's not like hurt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He loves His servant, there is not the shortcoming of the love that the human being they have. Be careful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have because he loves the person is going to favor them. There is no favoritism with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to his servant is a love of guidance, a love of them doing good. And if the same person does wrong, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish him. And he told us about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِلَيْكَ إِذَا لَتَّخَذُوكَ خَلِيلًا وَلَوْ لَا أَنْثَبَتْنَاكَ They tried to try you to change some of the revelation that we have inspired to you. And if you have, in any case, follow them, then we would have the taste you the double punishment in this life and the double punishment in the hereafter. And this is for the best of the creation, the best who have ever worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no favoritism. So you don't say like, I'm a Muslim, alhamdulillah, I make myself in the Muslim, Allah will spare me. No. As long as you are rightful, as long as you are doing good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will regard you with goodness, will love you, will guide you, will give you, will bless you. But if you turn, you're going to be punished. So first element, there is nothing aziz Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said even to the wife of the Prophet, our, our, our mother, he said, if you commit any obscenity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you the double of the punishment. It's not something big for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to understand this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is well established as the mahabba of Allah, the law for his servant, and as something that is not like the way that we have our emotion. The third thing, when you know the one who forgive you subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he forgive you is out of his bounty, is out of his gift. You do not have any right in this forgiveness. You cannot say, you know, you go to a store, you give money and you take the commodity. That's your right. That you, becomes your ownership because you paid money. What are you going to pay for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have forgiveness? 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you forgiveness out of his bounty, out of his mercy. He's not because you deserve it. So imagine forgiveness is fadlun mahbun. The second thing, whatever you do as a good deed is a fadl from Allah. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gift upon you. Because had it not been Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all be following the shaitan. Had it not been the mercy of Allah and his bounty and his grace upon you, most of you or like most of you will have followed the shaitan. Had it not been Allah's mercy upon you and His grace, none of you be happy could be purified. Therefore, the good deeds that you do, the good deeds that you do, it is a gift from Allah. A gift from Allah. Then when you look at yourself, so the, the, the right thing I do is a gift from Allah. And then whatever I'm getting is a gift from Allah. And if Allah has give, uh, give me, subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant me forgiveness, is also a gift from Allah. Pure gift. I do not have any share in it. On the other side, when you look at ourselves, now we know that we are not worthy of, I will say, we're not worthy. It's like the rahmah of Allah make it worthy for us. But as you, you don't have anything to present. Anything. What are you going to say to your Lord? He said, Ya Allah, I've been praying. I said, who guided you to the prayer? Who made you to love the prayer? Who put the iman? Who put the guest of faith into your heart? You're going to say, you, Ya Allah. Then when you realize we are incapable in any way to be pay the thanks or the gratefulness to Allah to his bounty. It's impossible. Then a person comes into full humility and incapable and that's how the way of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you look on the side of the human being, we are by nature weak, ignorant. We always dispute. We always complain. Um, transgressing ourselves. And this is in the Quran. خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا كَانَ الْإِنسَانُ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا All of it in the Quran. So this is the nature of the human being. And the nature of the human being, by nature, we go astray. Because what we have as subhanAllah instant, we do not have that ability to have it be go astray, go straight. So only the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's going to help you to manage those instincts, to put them and invest them in the best way to honor yourself, to bring to yourself prosperity. Without the guidance of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kullukum dhalun illa man hadith. All of you is astray except the one I have guided. Then, when we come back to the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال ما أصابك من حسنة فمن نفسك whatever has touched you from good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فمن الله وما أصابك من سيئة فمن نفسك So whatever touched you from good whatever you do from good whatever you do as a good deed is all from Allah and whatever subhanallah touched you from evil or harm and whatever you have done as a sin and commit as a sin is all from yourself so you see, subhanAllah, this dichotomy, this, this difference, this contrast, then is the nature of a human being to come and beg for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this forgiveness. Why? Because the forgiveness then, it's not about sins. It's about, subhanAllah, you're not even able to pay the thanks to Allah. You'll not be able to do anything except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the forgiveness here, its definition, it's not forgiven sins that they have done. It is a mercy, it is a comprehensive mercy that include the forgiveness of the sin, that include the taking of the darkness from the heart, that include the purification of the soul, that include the cleanliness of the self, that include the breathing of the soul of the guides into you, that include the permission and Allah give you the opportunity to come close to Him. That is the forgiveness. And that include whatever gap, whatever curtain, whatever, subhanAllah, things like hinges or things that stopping the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reach you, it is the forgiveness will take it away. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, barakah and rahmah, what it will stop it? What are the obstacles? Is that rahmah that you need, what is this rahmah? Is the asking for the forgiveness. Therefore, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness with the craving, with desire, with longing, that's all what you need to be honored. That all what you need to be provided. That all what you need to have prosperity. That all what you need to have children. That all what you need to have barakah in your life. All what you need is forgiveness. Why? Because forgiveness is not asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, 
to erase your sins. Forgiveness is a mercy that it shower you to cleanse everything and keep clear the path between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, said, days that it comes that you run on the my heart will be clouded. Subhanallah, clouded. And I will make a sighfar a hundred times. Because you feel the Prophet Sallallahu and the scholar, they explain it, the continuous forgiveness of the Prophet Sallallahu because in every moment, he's getting higher, Subhanallah, in closeness to Allah, in every moment. So when he look back, he full look back like this is moments of heedlessness it was. And then, Subhanallah, he keep asking forgiveness, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the forgiveness, it helps you to climb into the level of the Rahmah of Allah and the nearness to Allah, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That is the forgiveness. So the forgiveness is the Rahmah that everyone is in need. The forgiveness, not everyone is in need, actually, is the core element in our life that must be the greatest dream in our life. For this reason, Ibrahim said, I wish, subhanAllah, despite the fact that Allah promised you that he'll forgive you, he's promised you, but are you certain that you're going to be accepted? Are you certain that the deeds that Allah guided you to do, it, you did it in a proper way for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with? That's why that humility comes khawf wa tama, fear to not be accepted and desire and hoping to be accepted. That mix that make you a strong believer. That mix that will bring because this tama, what will be as a result, give you as a beautiful fruit. It is the sweetness of Iman. That one you're going to find the pleasure. That one you're going to find that serenity. That one you're going to find the delight of the eye is only with this tama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, I'm going to give you a few evidence. From the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the istighfar as Nuh alayhi salam said Nuh, قَالَ وَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلُ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرًا I say, ask Allah for forgiveness as a rahmah, to shower you, to help you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send you rain in abundance. يُرْسِلَ عَلَيْكُمْ السَّمَاءَ مِدْرًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالًا He give you money, rizq, وَبَنِينَ children. وَجَنَّاتٍ وَأَنْهَارٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ And he make you gardens and rivers. So you see the forgiveness, it's not about sin, about subhanAllah, what you are blocking with our nature, the barakah from Allah to descend, this blessing to descend, the forgiveness will remove that obstacle so you'll be showered with all this barakah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, from mujibati, from what make the forgiveness, subhanAllah, uh, the rahmah of Allah, the requirement of the rahmah is the maghfir. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Naml, قَالَ لَوْ لَا تَسْتَغْفِرُونَ اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَرْحَمُونَ Your forgiveness will bring you rahmah. Your forgiveness help you to not be punished. And if there is, subhanAllah, punishment that is going to, subhanAllah, fall on a community, Allah will save you. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah was not going to punish them while they are still asking for forgiveness. So you see, for forgiveness is like the breathing, must be the breathing of the believer, is like the type of the dhikr. This is how we hold at high esteem the forgiveness, to know its element, to know its requirement, to know how important in our life that when you come in Laylatul Qadr and you say, Allahumma khfili, you say it with your heart, Allah will forgive you, inshallah, because you're going to be truthful, know what you're saying, and acknowledging the greatness of Allah and your state of need, full need and dependence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the other ayah, beautiful ayah, in the beginning of Surah Hud, قَالَ وَأَنِسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُبُلَيْهِ Ask Allah forgiveness and repent to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُمَتِّعْكُمْ He will give you joyful life. He will give you great life. To the end of your term, then you and then he will greatly, graciously reward you in the day of judgment. Forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that He prepared all this Jannah, all this beautiful thing that we cannot even imagine. And on top of it, the pleasure of Allah. To whom? Qala for those who say, Ya Allah, we have believed. Forgive our sins and shield us from the hellfire. Then today, when you're going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the two elements that you aspire to have. Bismillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyya al-mustafa amma ba'd. 
It is very obvious for the people who running to achieve their goals into this short life to see them working so hard. You see, for example, people in the field of sport, how much dedication they have, how much training they have just to become a famous person. You see them into the world of acting, in the world of uh, subhanAllah, of, of entertainment, how much they do. And you look at yourself. These people, they do it for a vain thing. Will you not do it for Allah? You believer, you not crave. You not aspire. You not hope for the forgiveness of Allah. The forgiveness of Allah will grant you all the beautiful things that everyone is looking to have and more because they do not know the more which is the more that pleasure and that sweetness in your heart that no one can attain except the servant of Allah, the true servant of Allah. No one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the core which is this, this desire to be the object of racing. What he said in Surah Ali Imran, وَسَارِعُ إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ Race for the forgiveness. And the Jannah. So the path of the Jannah is that forgiveness. So it's not about sins. It's a rahmah that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it key to his paradise. And in Surah Al-Hadith, قَالَ سَارِعُ Compete for maghfirah. For maghfirah. For that, subhanAllah, maghfirah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he put all this element for you because he want to shower you with his mercy. He wants you to come to that understanding that what really matters into your life is Allah. is the one that He created you. The one that He gave you all the beautiful things into your life. Knowing that what we had done to ourselves or done to us from evil is we have wronged ourselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want that for you. In takfuru, la yardahu. Allah does not please him that you'll be in denial and ungrateful. That's why he said, Sariu, Sariu, to this maghfirah. And he will give you, shower with all you this thing. Therefore, as a believer, let's boost our iman to have this maghfirah, this forgiveness, to have the highest status in our heart. To have to hold it with high esteem. And hold it in high esteem, that's the path to the truthfulness. That's the path to ikhlas, sidqun wa ikhlas, truthfulness and sincerity. And look. What uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said to Abi Bakr, the best of the companions, he came to ask him for a special dua. Teach me, Ya Rasulullah, a special dua. He said, Ya Abi Bakr, when it comes to the end of the prayer, said, Oh Allah, I have transgressed myself. A great transgression. Shortcoming. Things. Because you make sujood and you are distracted. Allah gave you the gift of the sujood to be the closest to him and your heart into your business. That's required forgiveness. Allah give you the gift of the prayer and then you are busy. You're not going to pray on time because you are busy. Are you forget that gift? That gift is the greatest thing in your life. That's required forgiveness. Then when you think this way, you understand the hadith that Allah, the Prophet ﷺ was teaching to Abu Bakr. Qala, I have transgressed myself, great transgression. This is hadith that he teaches me. Dalabtu nafsi dhulman kathir. And there is no one who forgives the sins except you, Ya Allah. Forgive me a forgiveness from you. You are the oft forgiven, the most merciful. So you see the forgiveness in totally different dimension that most of the people they think of. So the forgiveness is the best of the thinking. It is what you need to boost your desire for to be the ultimate of your dream. That's how you're going to have the barakah and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I end with this. A Sayyida Aisha came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she asked him, Ya Rasulullah, if I have, have been bestowed the gift to have Laylatul Qadr, what I should say? Qalilha, he said, Quli, Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbu al-afwa fafwa. Ya Allah, you are the one who loves to pardon. The one who loves to forgive. Forgive me and pardon me. That is the dua of Laylatul Qadr. Which is give you, subhanAllah, how can I ask forgiveness if I have it in the lows of my precedence in my heart? Therefore, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by tonight having the highest into our heart to really regard that the greatest of our dream to be achieved is the forgiveness. Not your study, 
not your business. That comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to you if you have this great dream into your life to be the ultimate thing to achieve. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill our heart this great objective and help us to boost us to become like, not Ibrahim. Ibrahim is a high level, but like also the, these people who just believed, this sorcerer who just believed, if we'll have that craving and they desire that they have in their heart, Wallahi, we'll be safe the rest of our life and we'll be safe in our grave and we'll be safe when we get to resurrect it. One of the stama, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and you give. And giving for the sake of Allah is the burhan, is the evidence of your truthfulness. And I invite you today. You know, in every masjid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the light of the guidance to come down. And alhamdulillah, Allah bestowed upon us as a gift, as a team, al-aman, and our dear community, all of you, to take this light and to invest it in da'wah, in spreading the word of Allah, in having the core mission of the masjid is to be the dhikr of Allah, is to be the teaching, the education, and subhanAllah, to push the heart, to make out of this masjid factory of hearts that will be people to be cleansed and purified and they go out to the society as righteous people, righteous subject. This is our objective that have been working on. We have project of education. As all you know, you can check off the website. And alhamdulillah, this has been working for since we started this place six years ago. And we have only one fundraising, which is today. And today, after the salah, I will ask you to be patient and we just is going to be like as a barakah because the main one please join us today we have a night till the fajr to the dawn salamun hiya hatta matla' al fajr with the meaning of the forgiveness all together will be begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have us be entered into his rahmah and to be freeing inshallah from the hellfire let's all together make this real and concrete by bringing your evidence the evidence is like give sadaqah give to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in you and seal into your heart that desire of forgiveness and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace you whatever you had and cleanse your soul and put a blessing into you and into your wealth and into your children so whatever you want to give we're going to ask for a few hands inshallah and then the main one inshallah will be after the uh, the salah after inshallah the isha tonight by starting the laylat al qadr and you can see i mean the situation of the parking fa no comment fa may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you abundance of rizq and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften your heart in giving and supporting the light of allah descending in this masjid and the way that it been invested inshallah ta'ala فاللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا اجمعين وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اجعلنا من عتقائك من النيران في هذا الشهر الكريم اللهم اعتق رقابنا من النار اللهم اجعلنا من عتقائك من النيران في هذا الشهر الكريم اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا اجمعين يا رب العالمين وتوفنا برحمتك مسلمين اللهم يا حافظ يا مغيث اغث اخواننا في غزه اللهم اغثهم يا رب العالمين احفظهم بحفظك وانزل عليهم رحماتك وانزل عليهم سكينتك وافرغ عليهم صبرك اللهم يا رب العالمين افرغ عليهم صبرا وثبت اقدامهم اللهم امن روعاتهم واستر عوراتهم اللهم وانصر مجاهديهم اللهم وانصر مجاهديهم ودمر الظالمين المعتدين انك قوي عزيز واخر دعوانا ان الحمد لله رب العالمين والى الصلاه يرحمكم الله